a very warm welcome back to Six Ashes for episode 29 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's 4.25 in the afternoon. I'm standing by field 41 at the pig farm. Oh, I have another problem. Well, it's not a problem. Maybe. I bought the harvester over and I also went up and collected our regular header, which was still sitting in the barn where we bought the harvester from. So that's been collected. The problem is, if you look up top right, it's still saying crop moisture is too high. Which means, although... I've got this field here, and there is a difference here. It looks like it's ready to harvest. Now, sometimes it looks like it's ready to harvest, but it's not. But if we go in and look on the menu here, and we're on growth, it is sitting on ready to harvest. And if I use my handheld tool, 100% grown, it's ready to harvest, 100% fertilised, 22% moisture. I think that just needs to come down to 20, and we'll be all right. So... Initially, I thought, well, that's fantastic. We put a winter crop in, and that winter crop is ready to harvest early summer. Last year, I didn't have crops ready to harvest till mid-autumn, so putting a winter crop in is well worth it. The problem is the crop moisture just doesn't want to quit. That's been sitting on that all day. The problem was it poured with rain. Was it last night or this morning? Which meant, obviously, everything was soaking wet. So I can't actually touch that yet, which is really frustrating. I mean, I do have the option, if I wanted to, of turning crop moisture off. The symbol would still be there, but it would let me harvest. But that's, I suppose, kind of, in essence, a bit of a cheaty way of getting around it. You need that symbol to disappear. So I think I'm just going to have to stick with it and say, you know what? If I can't harvest that until, you know, potentially, that could drop off at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock this evening. In which case, I'll crack on. If not, it'll be tomorrow morning. I think that's the best I can probably get away with. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. As far as animals go, how are we looking? Just to double check everything. Everything's still sitting as it was. 146 pigs, 100 chickens, 53 sheep, and 50 beef cows. And I think they're looking okay now. They are. Uh, grass and surface rations absolutely fine. We put a water pump in, that's done. Cleanliness is good. We're looking all right. So, uh, yeah, I think this is just a hurry up and wait situation now, isn't it? Just fingers crossed, I suppose. And there we have it. Just gone six o'clock in the evening. I'm going to crack on. This is the earliest harvest I think I've done when I've run seasons. Sussex Farms. I'm actually trying to think, did I do seasons on Geiselsberg? I can't remember. Crop moisture is down to 20%. We should be good to go. Fingers crossed. I'm going to leave straw swath because we're going to collect that and store it because you can never have too much. It's going to take a while with this. I am looking at getting another harvester. I think I've got straw swath in there. We'll soon find out. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm so pleased. Yes, we have. I'm going to run straight up the middle rather than try and do weird turns and stuff like that at the moment. The wheat will go into storage and that will be towards pig food. I'm still considering to keep my eye out for a sunflower field or canola, something like that, that I can feed for the pigs. Can 
I turn around in this gap? Not really. Probably could have done with the headlands, right? Now I know I can just go and buy straw. And I know it has no value, so technically I could go and get straw from one of the, the purchase points that become available. You know the sort I'm talking about, and it wouldn't be an issue, but that's the whole point of doing the crop yourself, to provide your own stuff for your own farm. I do like this little harvester. I am looking at a class, actually, um, to replace this, but I want to get these fields done first. Again, viewing this as a kind of, you know, as farming is, this is a microcosm. Bear with me just one second. Sorry about that. I had a very important phone call I had to take. <laughs> I know that seems incredibly rude, but I did. And it was important that I took it. Well, what was I talking about? What was I saying? Oh yeah, early harvest. Oh yeah, I've got my own class. Harvester. A small one. Probably a Mega, I think. Is it Mega XL? I think it's the first one I bought when I was farming Stone Valley and then I kind of upgraded but this has only got a fairly small tank I mean it's a fairly small harvester but it's so cheap this one that's what I found with it but I think that one only works out about 45 grand I think it is have I lost paint off of the um, pipe? That paint chips off the pipe. That's weird, it looks like it. Let's raise that up. Yes, yeah, so what I'll do, I'll get this field done, then we'll head over and we'll get fields. What fields are they? Fields 21 and. I can never remember field numbers. Yeah, 21 and 22. We'll go over to CJ, we'll get those done. Um, I did over at the. Um, at CJ Farms I made a load more TMR and put it in storage as I said I was going to to free up bale space and I also just mixed a load of the silage bales and put some loose silage away as well I've still got a load of bales left but I think I don't think I've got many hay bales left so the point behind that was I was trying to free up space so that when I make my hay I've got plenty of space for hay bales because I'm going to do baling again, I'm going to do hay bales. I could do loose hay, but I'm going to do hay bales again. I, I prefer, depending on the situation and the circumstance, I really do enjoy, I, you know, I know a lot of people have sort of commented in the past about the fact that all I ever seems to do is get to a point where I can store everything loose and then I just make everything loose. I love doing it with, with, um, with bales. Again, it's one of those, those processes I find incredibly, incredibly therapeutic. So anyway, this is being recorded again while I'm away. I know a few people have said, um, I hope you're having a nice holiday. I'm not on holiday. <laughs> I'm away, like I said, I'm not gonna go into details because it's personal, it's family stuff, but I'm, I'm dealing with some family matters that need to be dealt with, but I'm just away from home. And like I said, my wife and I are both still working. She had to bring the work stuff away with her and she's working remotely. And I am too, and we're dealing with some other stuff kind of in the in the downtime. Uh, we did the bits we had to last week from Wednesday to Friday, partially Saturday. I'm recording this bit on Sunday. I don't know whether this will be posted on Sunday. It may be Monday, it depends. And because of everything that's, that I've been sorting out and doing, I haven't been on I haven't been on the comments since Wednesday, so I apologise. Apologies, I apologise for anyone that has commented or was expecting a response or anything. I, I haven't been on. Um, I just haven't been able to. And I appreciate um, the people that messaged me directly. Thank you for everyone's well wishes. And you know, I know some people kind of sort of hear what I'm saying. It's one thing I was talking to my wife about the other day when I do a video like I do now. I know some people watch without the sound on, which I find weird. I, I never quite understand that. Um, some people turn the sound down. Some people watch on times two. They speed it up to get through it quicker. Uh, again, I don't know. However you watch it, it's entirely up to you. 
Um, but people don't always seem to hear. I'll say things, and then I'll get comments or messages asking me something that I've either ah, I'm full that I've mentioned already, or they've got kind of the wrong end of the stick. They haven't quite heard what I've said. Ah, oh, now this is where I might have a problem because didn't I have to have the trailer smaller? I did, didn't I? Because that wouldn't fit. That's another reason for looking at another harvester. This is a great start out one and cheap as chips, but because that pipe isn't very long or very high for the trailer I've got, that's a bit of a problem. So what I need to do now is go and grab... Where did I leave the trailer? I think it might be up where the wood chips are. So I'll go and grab the tractor. I'm also then going to grab a loading wagon. Oh, the other thing I'd better check really quickly is weather. Today, 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 we're good. Oh man, rain Tuesday and Wednesday. I need to get this harvested then. Oh no, today, and then we've got all of tomorrow. Oh, that's right, cool, cool. I was, I was looking thinking, oh no, it's going to rain tomorrow, but we're still on today, then Monday, and it's cloudy, but okay. So we'll be right to get the harvest done. I was just worried if it suddenly started raining, you know, potentially we'd start getting degradation in crops and that kind of stuff, and not crops, but what's on the ground. So, a tractor it is. Let's go and grab the trailer. Maybe it's where I think it is. And then, like I say, I'll get that done. And we'll get the harvester over to the other one. I've got enough money, I'm just wondering, should I get the harvester now? But it seems a bit... I haven't really used that one very much. That's what I started off saying when I got interrupted about it being a microcosm. I've, I've mentioned before, is that when you're playing, or when you're, you know, however you're looking at doing it, and if you're running seasons on a three day, a six day, a nine day, it is a microcosm of an entire year. It's a microcosm of farming. You know, we all know if you play on the game regularly with no seasons on, if you plant a crop, a crop will not grow overnight, but in game it will. And when you're doing seasons, you know, three days represent X amount of days in real life or months. Six days will represent, again, I think six, each day represents 15 days, doesn't it? That, that kind of thing. So if you've had a harvester and you've used it like that one, again I'm just justifying maybe buying another one, but if you've used it a few times in one season, you've got to look at that realistically as you've used that for months. Where have I left the trailer? Please tell me it's in this next one. Oh yeah, <laughs> I thought I've lost it. So yeah, I mean in essence, looking like that you you have had it and used it for months in theory i know in game i haven't really used it that much but or maybe i should just wait i'm gonna have to, i am gonna have to convert this there's no way that this is gonna uh, i'm sure when i did it last time the pipe wouldn't reach over the top of this so i'll do a bit of a changeover right then Soon a little while, probably up at field 21 and 22. Uh, then I'll look, I'll probably lease a loading wagon again. I'm at that point, I, I'm starting to wonder, especially with doing hay again as well. Oh no, I'm going to bail the hay, aren't I? Is whether or not I should buy myself a loading wagon or just plump for the milling machine because it does make life a lot easier. But then I do want to do things slightly differently. I don't want to do it the same every single time, you know? And again, thank you to all the comments. I know people always message me and say, oh, you do know you can do this. You know there's this piece of machinery, that piece of machinery. You know, yeah, there, there are lots of bits of machinery I do forget about. You know, there are so many. And as I mentioned before, when Virtual Farmer put his tweet up about the amount of mods there are on FS19 compared to 17, it's quite scary when you suddenly realise just how many mods there are compared to FS17. And we look at it and go, oh, you know, there's hardly oh, anything. What am I supposed to use? There are so many mods now, right? Customize. That's what I want it on, don't I? Configuration standard. What this menu is mad. Yeah, don't want the standard extension. I want that off standard. Customize for zero. And that's the thing, you know. So sometimes, yeah, there are the odd mods that I completely forget and think, oh, okay, yeah, that's a good idea, I could use that. And there are so many different ways of doing each particular job, you know. So, yeah, I do appreciate you know, people messaging and saying, oh, you know, have you thought about using this or using that? And you've got to remember as well, I have done so many Let's Plays now 
whether it be 15, 17, 19, I have most, mostly tackled or tried most jobs in all different ways. I, I do try to do it differently, but unlike everyone else, if you find a method that works well, a method that you do and think, you know what, I like that, that works well for me, it works well for my style of gameplay, that's how I'm going to carry on doing it. You do often then find yourself falling back into, you know, bits of equipment. You think, well, I know that works well, so I'm going to buy that again. And it's very difficult because you want to try and mix things up and try different bits of machinery and show off different things. But then you also know that if there's something you really like and, and, and works well, you want to use that a lot. So, I don't know, it's a bit of a juggling act, isn't it, really? Okay, there was me saying I'll see you in a bit. I really will now. Let's crack on with this, get this field done. See, I'll probably do loaded wagon again. There's not going to be that much straw, I don't, I don't think. Maybe between this field and the next ones, I'll buy another harvester. Who knows? I still haven't decided. No, I did not buy this. <laughs> this is not the new harvester. Uh, I was just finishing off field 41. Just happened to have a look at the harvest contract. I wouldn't have a look at the contracts. And hallelujah, a harvest contract popped up. You don't get them very often. And it's field nine, which is a big field. So I've borrowed the equipment that was being offered. I've got to take it to Grainco, which is up this end anyway. So I thought, you know what, I'll, get, I'll use a big harvester, I'll use the header. Plus it will give me a chance to see how easily or, or um, how difficult it may be. I'm incredibly lucky actually, because let's be honest, field nine's an easy field to get to. Nice and wide roadway, nice and wide entryway, with plenty of room on the other side for manoeuvring around. So in all honesty, for using a large harvester, it, it wasn't too much of a problem. Um, if you're using it, using them on fields like this, where it's tight all the way around, narrow, no space to turn around as you get into the field, using a bigger harvester would be, you know, like we know already on this map, the bigger equipment is difficult to use. So, I'm going to do this one. And if that means leaving my, um, finish off my harvest on field 21 and 22 till tomorrow morning, I'll do that tomorrow morning. So let's crack on. Weirdly, having the Fent Ideal, it's lovely, big harvester, nice fair size header. I've got a massive Fent tractor with a tiny trailer. 
which seems a bit weird. And this is a fair size field, so I'm assuming I'm going to get quite a lot off of this. So it's, it's either telling me you're going to be lo doing loads of runs backwards and forwards anyway. Ah, oh, that was the other thing. Oh no, did we disprove that it would work? Or would it only work with seasons? I'm trying to think now. Oh, this might be the perfect time to try out... Who was it? Was it Steve? ages ago when I test out the theory that if you took on a harvest contract you could collect the swath with a milling machine but I'm sure when I did it someone commented and said that will only work if you're doing seasonal work in inverted commas is that worth a try nothing with this being as well once I've delivered what I need to deliver for the contract anything left over is mine so I can put that in storage as well with it being wheat and wheat off my fields, that can either be used for the pigs or I can use it for feed for the chickens. I'm thinking about getting another chicken pen, you know. Because they're not producing eggs as quickly as I thought they would. And that's because, as I mentioned before, I'm, I've had farms where I've been running 400, 500, in the last farm, Stone Valley, 1,200 chickens. So the amount of eggs I was getting daily was off the charts. Because I've only got 100 chickens, I'm not getting a huge amount of production, so I'm just wondering whether or not... Because potentially... Sheep pens, I got rid of the original one I had, so I've got the standard one at the farm. There is another sheep pen, two sheep pens, up at the other dairy farm, which potentially, if I do end up buying that, I'll have two cow farms. So two cow farms, potentially two plots for sheep. Could you know? I'll have a think. I'll, I'll maybe pick a field or a corner of a field and maybe get some more chickens. It's an idea anyway. We are going to start losing the light though soon. It's just before 8 o'clock and whilst we are in early summer I reckon by about half 8 it's going to start getting dark. Yeah, there aren't many fields on this farm or in this area that you'll get I mean you can get away with using big harvesters but like I say the entrance the, the um, access is the word I'm looking for the access to them isn't great field 9 and field 8 are the two fields which are probably the easiest ones to access with big machinery I don't know what to do now do I do this as a test do I go and lease a milling machine grab my trailer and see is it possible I'm sure I said I was going to test that theory again when I did seasonal work which I'm doing now I don't really want to put this harvest on hold but I could finish this harvest off during the night it's not too much of a problem although we are almost full and for once I've gone the right way round so my pipe is on the correct side <laughs> don't always do that as some of you will know As soon as this is full, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm sure the trailer I've been given for this contract is only 21,000 litres. That's going to be a few runs backwards and forwards, but then to be fair, Grain Co is just here, just along the road there. 
if I was having to take the Seven Valley stores, that'd be a bit different. I think I would probably grab my trailer and try and do a bigger load. Okay. In there. Right, leave that there. Bear with me. I've got to go and get a tractor. I'm going to lease the milling machine. I might as well try it. It won't hurt to try. A bit more consumer testing, if not just my own sanity. I'm up at field nine. I thought what I would do, I emptied the harvester um, and Jamie from the pubs popped up, said he'd give us a hand. So Jamie's running the harvester. I thought I'll keep that running. I've gone and grabbed the milling machine. Now, it wasn't Stephen, it was Terry. It was Stephen's secret field. It was Terry that said about this, and I couldn't get it to work regularly. So here, this is the test. Can I collect the straw swath off a field that's a contract field? Normally this doesn't work. Anything you try and put on a field to collect the straw swath, um, it says that only contract equipment is it? Only contract equipment is allowed to be used. And it won't let you pick anything up. I think on PC there's a mod that allows you to do this, but on console you can't. So, I mean, technically though, is this? Am I stealing straw? Or am I stealing straw? Or is this fair game because it's part of the contract I'm doing? I don't know. I've, I really hope this works, Terry. If this works, you're a legend. So let's turn it on. Drop it down. <laughs> it does. So, you can, if you're doing a harvest contract that leaves a straw swath on console, you can collect the straw swath, but you need to use the milling machine. I don't think a loading wagon will work because a loading wagon seems to have a, a more direct contact with the ground and the contract parameters will then say that the machinery is not allowed, only, you know, only contract equipment is allowed. So the fact I'm now, not only am I harvesting the crop, and I will then get paid for anything over and above, or I get to keep anything over and above, I'm also getting the straw swap. And I think of this field, this will be more straw than I'm going to need. I mean, it's perfect. And I think to lease the milling machine was only 300 odd quid, something like that. I'm also now fully aware the harvest is full. Oh, I am absolutely... Terry, you're a legend. At my hat. I doff my hat in your direction, sir. Right, I'm going to go and grab the fence, bring that back over, empty the harvester and let Jamie carry on doing that. I'll get this field harvested, keep whatever grain's left over, get as much straw as I can off this, but like I say, I'm losing the light. Oh, is it st am I stealing straw? Hmm. No, of course I'm not. Well, I don't know, unless the farmer wants the straw. <laughs> unless the farmer wants hand getting rid of the crop, but then wants to bale the straw himself, but I don't know. I'm amazed it's working. I'm absolutely blown away that that's working. Fantastic, though. So, this, this it has to be very specific in that... It needs to be seasonal work. It needs to be the milling machine. And you can do it. And obviously you need to have um, straw swath enabled. Excellent. And then what I'll do is I'll finish off um, my fields 21 and 22 in the morning once, because you'll always get that little bit of um, crop moisture in the morning that normally goes by about 10 ish i mustn't forget as well tonight bearing in mind it's nine o'clock and it's still light that's amazing i need to make sure the animals are all bedded down and fed and watered and whatnot well the water's not a problem but, but they're all done before we head off to bed because i've got a funny feeling by i thought half eight but maybe by half nine it's going to get dark that is 
brilliant. Right, I'm pretty sure my silo at CJ Farms will take straw. I'm just thinking the closest place to get to. I've got my hayloft, so I can put it in there. Maybe I'll just run down to the hayloft. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to carry... Um, how does help but I got a nearly full grain tank? I've just emptied it. Didn't I? That's odd. So let's fill this up. So we'll get the lights on here as well. <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry. Hell Prey got a full grain tank. I don't understand how that was unloading into the trailer. Oh, <laughs> I do understand now, don't I? The trailer's full. It's only a 21,000 litre trailer, isn't it? That does explain it. Right, let's go and get this straw delivered and put away. So, like I say, well, we're going to carry on now. So, I will see you in a bit. I'm going to start delivering the grain. By the time I finish this contract, it's going to be dark. I mean, like, properly dark. So what I'll probably do is see you in a little while once I've got the contract complete. But I've got to be careful on that as well because I don't want to complete the contract, take the grain off the field and store it, then complete the contract and then lose the swaths that are on the ground still. So what I'll need to do is keep going on this until I've either filled up everywhere that I can put straw. But this will mean now I'm not going to need straw, especially if I turn it into pellet form. But I suppose that's the other thing I could do. Sorry, my mind is whizzing ahead. With the situation at the moment, that if I put loose straw into my mixer wagon, it turns it into pellets. If I store as much straw as I possibly can, I've got enough for bedding, but I could turn that into pellets, which I can then sell. Because I'll get more for pellets than anything else. It's a thought. Anyway. It's an idea moving forward. Hmm. This um, episode has not turned out how I thought it was going to. I thought I'd just get a bit of my own harvesting done and I'll be a step further on with what I was doing. So this is um, all changed. Right, beacons on. Let's get going. So it's about five minutes to midnight, just before five minutes to mid midnight, and I'm finally done. Contract is complete, so I've delivered everything I need to. I'm not going to finish the contract because obviously I've still got stuff sitting here. As you can see, 10,656 to me. What I've got left after the contract is 16,972 litres of wheat. That's mine. I'm going to go and put that into storage. Once that's been put into storage, then I will complete the contract. I took all the straw swath off the field that I could using Terry's technique. So thank you again for that, Terry. Absolutely fantastic. I have also done a bit of building. So what I've done is built a second hayloft. 
Now I know I've got my storage silos and I had to have those new extensions because the one that was faulty and that kind of thing. I could have put them in there, I know I could have because they will take them, but I thought to go do it properly, it needs to be hayloft. So I've had a second hayloft built in the field 41 that I've harvested right next to the pig farm. That's also the field I think I'm going to put an extra chicken coop in. Because now I've used a big chunk of that field for two haylofts, it kind of makes sense to utilise it for something else. So I am now currently sitting on just over 500,000 litres, because there is a little bit in one of the other silos. So yeah, I mean, I can't fault that at all. Right, we've just hit midnight. A few things. Property income's low, and that's low because I've just remembered that the honeypot allotments, I haven't filled up the manure or the water for the greenhouses. I need to get on that. So we are now into day two, early summer. I'm going to deliver this and then I'm going to get some sleep and get up in the morning. I'm going to crack on with field 21 and 22. That, at least as it stands at the moment, is the plan. We'll see how that goes. And what I end up doing with the straw, I'm not sure. The pellet situation is an option. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I might do. But that is a decision for the morning when I get up. So I'll see you in the morning. It's just before six o'clock in the morning. I didn't get a huge amount of sleep, but I did get some sleep. We are down at field 41. And as I said, we had a hayloft built. So I'm just gonna show you the hayloft. That's as close as I, get it. I could get it to the other one. So a little bit of landscaping, new hayloft is in. So like I said, we're just over 500,000 liters of straw in storage. All is good. Field 41. I said I was going to put a chicken coop down on here. I've been having a bit of a fiddle around. We've been doing a bit of a site survey. There's a bit of a sweep up. It's not seeming to want to accept the sort of pen. I could get a tiny one. There are quite a few small ones that take like 50 chickens. But I wanted to get a few more and they don't really see it. I can't seem to get one to fit in it is what I'm trying to say. So we're not going to do that here. What I am going to do though, uh, sheep, not sheep. Pigs are sorted out, they have been cleaned out this morning. Manure has been moved, etc. I've got wheat in the back of here. Um, harvester, as you can see, it's just come up. He's already off working on field 22. Jamie has quite kindly come back very early this morning to crack on with that. As far as contracts today go, do we have any? Oh, that's the other thing. Field 51, as you can see here. And field 16 here are now saying growing. <laughs> They're not just sitting on planted. I was so worried that both of those were going to say germination failed or something like that. But they are now growing. So that's a massive weight off my mind. We've got a load of fertilising jobs. No more harvesting jobs though. I'm going to be really disappointed if that's the only harvesting job we get this year. Because there are a few fields that are showing as ready to harvest oh, no where are they oh, yeah. field one over there there are a couple here oh field 10 field 10 was ready to harvest now that's just flipped straight over to harvested it is a concern um, but then we are very early so i'm hoping we are going to get some more maybe in autumn if we don't we don't but we'll do what we can do as things arrive so what we're going to do is head over to the main farm We'll unload the harvester, get Jamie cracking on again from there, and what I will do is then we'll muck out the cows. Uh, the sheep just need cleaning, the feed trough needs cleaning. They're not producing wool anymore, so that's not an issue. Now, I'm fully aware as well that at the moment, feeding is kind of going on behind the scenes, so to speak, in that the troughs have all got stuff in them. But that's why I've been making sure, I, th I have mentioned this before, I'm still getting all the necessary things required to feed them. So I did buy a load of pig food a while ago. I did, um, I have made hay, I have made silage, I have made total mix ration. Oh, that's the thing, poplars are growing. They're looking very good too. It's always difficult when you first plant them, the gaps look really big between them, but then as they start to grow and they get more bushy, it all, you know, works rather well so yes our poplars are growing which is all again very lovely 
and yeah, and collecting the straw as well, whatever I end up doing with it. So rather than just saying, well, there was feed already in the troughs when I bought the farms, therefore I'm not going to bother collecting any more, producing any more, I've kind of avoided doing it. I'm still going through the process of doing it all. As it stands at the moment, just it's not going into the troughs because they don't need it yet. But we'll get there. Not far to go. Not this field. Yes, see this one, whilst it is looking like it's ready to harvest, is not showing ready to harvest because it's not quite there yet. Where are we? Field 22 is the next one over. Just this one here. So I've decided on a different location for the chicken pen and um, that is in the process of being constructed and he's ended up in the middle of a lot of crops, brilliant. Let's get him moved. Frustrating. <laughs> this class seriously needs a wash. It is out. That was all the backwards and forwards yesterday when I was collecting the straw swaths off field nine. Blimey. Yeah, I swapped out for. Did I, mm, did I show you any runs? I didn't, did I? Um, I put the fence back at the farm, ready for doing the pigs and uh, swapped over for this. It goes a little bit faster and it just kind of seemed to work a little bit better with the um, the milling machine. Uh, and I know weirdly, having said I was going to use a loading wagon for doing my straw swaths because that was kind of the more realistic option, that sudden realisation when I started doing Field 9 of, hang on a minute, I can test out Terry's theory now because we're doing seasonal work. That's why I grabbed the milling machine. It wasn't, uh, you know, and the fact that it worked was absolutely amazing. Right, um, I'm going to have to do something so I don't orthodox. Close your eyes. That's better, no one needed to see that. Okay, I'm going to carry on now and do field 22. Field 21 will need to do what is strange as well, which only, again, has only just suddenly dawned on me. I haven't had the crop moisture thing. Normally in the morning, up until about 10am the crop moisture thing is showing because you've got the dew on the ground and it won't let you harvest. I didn't get that come up this morning. I suppose because we're in summer maybe. Normally when we're harvesting we're into autumn. But I did, yeah, it didn't happen. It was fine right from the offset. I'm not knocking it. Now I have a problem. Um, again which I hope you guys will understand but we'll see. In that tomorrow is the 8th of December. Tomorrow is the release of the first part of the Precision Farming DLC. If you're unaware of what that is, um, hop on over to the Farming Simulator website, check out their blogs, check out Twitter, uh, Facebook for Farming Simulator. Um, it's part of a two-year program being run with John Deere and there's some other companies, I can't remember all the names of them, I haven't got my laptop open. And it's the Precision Farming program they're kind of running. And it's a, it is a two-year thing. Um, and I've, I'm assuming it's along the lines of, because the new version of the game wasn't released, this is the kind of stuff that's going to be released in the interim until a new version happens, whenever that may be. So the first part of that tomorrow is regarding um, almost like a GPS it's crop mapping, soil sampling. So you take soil samples with a new machine that's going to be available. You then send those soil samples off. When you get the results back, it gives you the pH levels of the ground and the nitrogen levels. The pH levels will guide how you do your liming and the nitrogen levels will guide how you do your fertilizing. There are options for automatic so that when you get your new mapping and it maps the fields completely differently, there'll be new menus 
So when we come into, for example, into this menu, the filters over on the right hand side, there are going to be new menus in there. There'll be pH, there'll be nitrogen. There's going to be four new soil types. I think it's going to be loamy sand, sandy loam, sand and is it clay? Something clay, silty clay is it? I think. But again, I was going to go into more detail on all of that when it comes out technically tomorrow. So when you do your field mapping and you do the soil samples, and the more samples you do, the better a, a, an idea it gives you of um, what your ground's like. It then, the automatic system, when you hire a worker, or you set it on automatic, I think, and do it yourself. Again, that's something we're going to have to test when it comes out. You, um, you only put down what you need to, where you need to. So rather than liming an entire field or fertilizing an entire field, you'll put down what you need to on the field where it's required. There's also a thing that if you don't want to have the automatic um, uh, implementation of whatever it is you need to do, you can set it on manual and you can adjust the flow rates manually so you can add more or less of the product depending on the area. It's a bit mind-boggling. There's also going to be almost like a GPS station, um, like a base unit building that you place and as far as I can tell again it will need to be looked at from looking at all the stuff on the blog and the websites that that is um, a base station that your vehicles and the AI helpers and workers they can take their position relative to that base unit and they will then be more accurate with what they're putting down where they're putting it down based upon your soil samples your field mapping and that kind of stuff. It's all a little bit crazy, but that brings me on to the problem I have. <laughs> because we're, my wife and I are still away. And the place we are staying, we were informed <laughs> that tomorrow they're having a s essential electrical repair work done. The electricity board are coming out and doing some work. They're digging up the road outside we will have no power from about 9am through to about 4pm. There'll be no power, there'll be no internet, I'll have no Wi-Fi. I'm not going to be able to do anything. <laughs> I'm absolutely gutted. So the day it releases, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. Maybe at 4 o'clock, if it comes back on at 4 o'clock, I'll be out and crack on. Alright, oh, so here we've got parts of the field that either didn't germinate or have withered prior to harvesting we get that and it's in little patches here and there it's the first one I've come across but that's not too bad yeah so I'm a little bit stuck I, I, I there's not there's nothing I can do about it um, I, I can't take my my PlayStation and a screen and stuff and go somewhere else it's not like I can go to a, I don't I don't have an option is really the thing I'm trying to say so what I'm gonna have to do is um, wait until the evening and then look into it as best I can. I think it's going to be a little bit complicated initially because there's going to be loads of questions that I can't answer yet and won't know till we have a good look at it. In that, can it be switched on and off? Is it something that's going to be on all the time? Is it only relevant when you're running seasons? I don't know any of that and I've been looking through the blogs and can't find any more information on it. I might have to have a look in the forums as well. So, <clears throat> I was trying to think of some of the other things that dawned on me when I was looking through all the information and reading it. Yeah, I mean, mainly it's that, can it be turned on and off? Because I, I get, it's an incredibly realistic step forwards. And can potentially massively change the way you play the game. And it adds a whole new element of realism to be able to go out and once you've done your harvest and I think it would then also it gives you data oh yields it affects yields obviously and you also then when you do your harvesting you get yield data across your field so you will have lots of data to be analyzing that yield data I assume a bit like when you're running seasons now the first time you do it you won't have a lot of data to deal with but then when you roll over into the next year you'll have all your yield data you'll then go out and do your soil samples after harvest 
and then that will inform you as to what you need to do for the following year as you would do in real farming as all the farmers when i'm watching coal the corn star millennial farms how farms work um, pemberton's all of all of those guys they're always sampling all sorts of stuff um to see what they need to do um so it is a massive implementation and it will add a huge amount of immersion and realism but it's something that I can totally understand if a lot of players out there how all of a sudden have I now got straw swath enabled what happened there oh I missed my side panel <laughs> I was just pressed another button somehow never mind turn that yeah, if, if, if you're a kind of more of a casual gamer, you just want to come on and do a bit of farming, you don't necessarily want to come on and spend ages doing soil samples and then, you know, so yeah, I don't know. All those things we need to find out as and when. Um, but I think what I'll do now, I said I was going to go and clean out the uh, cows, we'll do that later on. The chicken pen is in the process of being done, so probably the next episode we'll do have a bit of a focus on the new chickens we'll get the cows cleaned out i will finish off this field and we'll do field 21 next door um, the good thing about this is i'll have a load of wheat on hand in the trailer to put into the chicken pen immediately i know actually what i might do because i've got the two pallets of um, chicken feed and all the bags i bought i might use those up first actually regardless of which way around i do it and i have got a full egg carton to deliver to Mrs Holland which I might sing in the back of the Land Rover and whiz down and do that too because that needs to be sorted out um, but anyway yeah a bit of a not like I said not quite how I thought this was going to go this episode a few things to look at and sort out potentially after tomorrow there's going to be a whole load of new stuff to be doing on the farms as well which is going to make life very interesting um, I hope you've enjoyed the episode I hope you're still enjoying the series if you are if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do as always thanks for watching